Hi there! Frequency counters are devices that can measure the frequency of a signal. They are used in a wide variety of applications, including electronics, telecommunications and audio engineering. In the past, frequency counters were complex and expensive devices, like the one in this schematic from the late 1970s. However, thanks to the development of microcontrollers, it is now possible to build simple and affordable frequency counters using a microcontroller like the Arduino Uno. In this video I will show you how to build a simple frequency counter for audio frequencies using an Arduino Uno and a few extra components, and we will discuss in future videos how to make frequency counters capable of working at much higher frequencies. So let's not waste any more time and get on this project right away. Today Frequency Counter is based on the Arduino Uno. This microcontroller is relatively outdated and slow, and so it will not be able to measure high frequencies. However, it is a good platform to learn how to make such an instrument, and it is enough versatile to allow us to make modifications both to the circuit and to the software to see how they change the performance. In other words, it is a good learning platform. In future episodes that will be aired soon, we will explore other methods for measuring frequency with the Arduino, and we will be able to see if such methods allow us to obtain better results than this one in this video. Now, what do we need for this project? First, an Arduino Uno, like this one. The one I am using is actually a clone of the original Arduino, but it works just as well as the original one. I could now say that we don't need anything else, and I would be right if we just wanted to display the measurements on the serial monitor through a computer attached to the Arduino. However, I decided to go to the extra step, and add to the circuit a nice LCD to show the measurements on it in real time. And so, we needed to add to the list of our components a small LCD. The one I decided to use for my circuit is the 1602A, which is based on the Hitachi HD4478 controller, with uh, 16 columns and 2 row display. The Liquid Crystal library available with Arduino ID greatly simplifies the usage of such display. Besides, both the Arduino Uno and the 1602A are available with my Arduino Mini Lab, which I described previously on this channel and which I will be using for this project. If you like, you can head to the link coming up now on the upper right corner to watch that video. And finally, we need two more components necessary to power the backlight of the display and to adjust its contrast, so we need a 10K linear potentiometer and a 220 ohms resistor. Here is the software that we will install on the Arduino Uno. The first line is used to incorporate in the code the Liquid Crystal library, which will allow us to control the display very easily. The second line defines a name for pin 8, which is the one that will be used as the input pin for our frequency counter. I have also four variables used to store the partial measurements made by the Arduino to calculate the frequency. And basically, every time I start a reading later in the code, the Arduino will start measuring the high-level duration of the pulses coming in, and will store such a value in pulse H. And then it will measure the low-level duration of the pulses, and will store them in pulse L. The sum of these two values, which is the period of the signal, will then be stored in pulse T. And once we have the period, we can easily calculate the frequency which will be stored in FRAC. The next statement is the call to create an object, LCD, from the class Liquid Crystal. Here we need to specify which data pins of the Arduino we want to use to control the display. In this case, I decided to use pins 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 to control respectively the register select, the enable pin, and the four binary digits 4, 5, 6 and 7, which are needed to encode the alphanumeric characters that the LCD will display. This is the setup function of the Arduino. 
The only thing we need to do here is to define pin 8 as the input pin of this circuit. And this, finally, is the loop function, the one that actually provides the instructions that the Arduino will need to follow continuously and repeatedly. First, we measure the duration of the high part of each pulse. By the way, the circuit can only measure TTL pulses. If we want to measure differently shaped signals, like analog signals, for example, we will need to pass such signals through a Schmidt trigger that will shape them into a TTL signal, and then we will insert this modified signal, this TTL signal, into pin 8. Function pulse in uses the internal timing system of the Arduino to measure the duration of the part of the pulses that we describe as the second parameter. In this line, therefore, we ask pulse in to measure the length of the high part of the pulse coming in from pin 8. Similarly, this other instruction tells the Arduino to measure the length of the low part of the pulse coming on pin 8. Now that we have these two values, we just need to add them up to obtain the period of the input signal. Such period, because of the Arduino internal timer T1, is going to be measured in microseconds. Then, from the period in microseconds, we calculate the actual frequency with this other statement. And now that we have the frequency, we just need to write it down on the LCD using the following four instructions. The first deletes the previous content of the display. The second sets the position of the display cursor to the first character of the first line. The third writes the frequency value on the display, moving forward at the same time the position of the cursor. The fourth instruction writes the measurement unit Hertz, HZ, to the current position of the cursor, leaving a space between the number and the HZ symbol. Lastly, to slow down the loop a little bit so we won't see the display flickering continuously, I have inserted a 500 milliseconds delay in the loop. Now that the software is ready, let's take a look at the schematic for our circuit. The schematic for this frequency counter is made of only four components, the Arduino Uno, here on the left, the liquid crystal display on the right, a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer to adjust the contrast on the LCD, and a 220 ohms resistor to power the LED for the LCD backlight. The LCD gets its power from the Arduino itself, which makes available a plus 5 volts over here, and of course the ground connection. The input of the frequency counter is on pin 8 through the pin header J1. Pin 8 is used as a digital input, which means that it expects to see a TTL level signal, which can be either 0 volts or plus 5 volts. For this reason, if we want to use this frequency counter for signals that are not in TTL format, we will need to add some extra circuitry to convert the available signal to the TTL levels. The information is written on the display through a data bus that is made of 4 or 8 bits. In the case we only use 4 bits, we use the inputs from DB4 to DB7, like we do in this case. The signs that need the full data bus will use all 8 input pins from DB0 to DB7. The 4 bits of the data bus are provided by pins D4 to D8 of the Arduino Uno. The display understands the meaning of the bits and the location where the corresponding alphanumeric characters have to be displayed with the help of the signals RS and E, which are controlled by the pins D2 and D3 of the Arduino. These two signals basically tell the display whether the information coming from the data bus is an address for a specific character position on the display or the actual character that needs to be displayed at that position. For this application, the signal RW is not used, since we only write on the display. The display is illuminated from its back thanks to an LED accessible from pins A and K on the LCD. Of course, A is the anode and K is the cathode of the LED. To activate the backlight of the display, we simply need to power the LED from these pins. In this case, we put in series to the anode a 220 ohms resistor to limit the current in the LED that we are powering through the plus 5 volts provided by the Arduino. 
Still on the display side, pin VSS is the power pin that needs to be connected to ground, and VDD instead is the power pin that needs to be connected to a plus 5V power supply, for which we use the designated plus 5V of the Arduino board. VO is the pin that controls the contrast on the display. This pin requires a voltage between 0 and plus 5V that can be manually adjusted through a potentiometer. The 10K potentiometer does in fact just that, and its endpoints are connected to the plus 5V on one side and the ground on the other side, while the cursor provides the variable voltage to the input VO moving between the two ends of the potentiometer. Let's now move to the lab, where I have already assembled the circuit, and so we can test it and see how it works. As you can see, the circuit is mounted on the same Arduino Mini Lab I described the some time ago in another video. The board on the left is the Arduino Uno clone, the one on the right is the LCD 1602A. All the connections are already made the exact same way described in the schematic. What we need to do now is to connect the Arduino to this laptop using a USB cable and then upload the code and finally try it. So, let's connect the cable on the Arduino. Then on the computer we will need to select the board. Check the code. And finally upload it. Now, let's see what is going on on the Arduino. Let's adjust the display contrast through the potentiometer. And we can now see something already on the display, even though the input is not yet connected. That is because the pulsing function is probably detecting some sort of noise that gives the impression that there is a signal connected to the input. Uh, furthermore, uh, the pulse in function does not work very well to frequencies that are below the 20 30 Hz. So let's use this function generator to provide a TTL signal at 30 Hz and connect it to the input of the frequency counter. And uh, yes, the display is already showing the 30 Hz of the signal. Let's now increase the frequency to 100 Hz. And the Arduino measures again the correct frequency. Let's increase now the frequency to 200 Hz. Uh, and now the Arduino is showing 201 Hz. Not exactly what we expected, but close enough for this minimalistic circuit. Let's try now with 300 Hz. Now 400 Hz. And now 1 kHz. Let's push it a little bit now. And yeah, at 2 kHz there is now some flickering on the display. You see the numbers are not stable anymore. Let me lower the frequency until the flickering stops. Yeah, you see, basically at 1200 Hz the flickering is almost gone, and, uh, and we can read nicely the frequency that has been measured. And so, we have found that this circuit is capable of measuring pretty well frequencies between 30 Hz and 1200 Hz, showing some flickering when going a little higher than that. It's not much, I know, but this is really a minimalistic circuit. Next time we will show something that does much better than this. So, yes, this is just a simple example of how to beat the frequency counter using an Arduino Uno. There are many other ways to build frequency counters, and the specific design will depend on the application, of course. However, this simple design is a good starting point for anyone who wants to learn how to build one. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. And in the meantime, happy experiments!